The Seiros listen is a period of approximately 223 synodic months, approximately 6585.3211 days or 18 years, 11 days, 8 hours that can be used to predict eclipses of the sun and moon. One Seiros period after an eclipse, the Sun, Earth, and Moon return to approximately the same relative geometry, a near straight line, and a nearly identical eclipse will occur, in what is referred to as an eclipse cycle. A SAR is one half of a Seiros, a series of eclipses that are separated by one Seiros is called a Seiros series. History The earliest discovered historical record of what is known as the Seiros is by Chaldean astronomers in the last several centuries BC. It was later known to Hipparchus, Pliny, and Ptolemy. The name, Seiros, Greek, Saris, was applied to the eclipse cycle by Edmund Halley in 1691, who took it from the Suda, a Byzantine lexicon of the 11th century. The Suda says, The Seiros is a measure and a number among Chaldeans. For 120 Saroi make 2,220 years years of 12 lunar months according to the Chaldeans' reckoning, if indeed the Seiros makes 222 lunar months, which are 18 years and 6 months i.e. years of 12 lunar months. The information in the Suda in turn was derived directly or otherwise from the chronicle of Eusebius of Caesarea, which quoted Berossus. Guillaume Le Gentil claimed that Halley's usage was incorrect in 1756, but the name continues to be used. The Greek word apparently comes from the Babylonian word, saru, meaning the number 3600. According to Tony Freeth, in an article for Scientific American, mechanical calculation of the Seiros cycle is built into the Antikythera mechanism. Topic. Description The Seiros, a period of 6585.3211 days 14 common years plus 4 leap years plus 11.321 days, or 13 common years plus 5 leap years plus 10.321 days, is useful for predicting the times at which nearly identical eclipses will occur. Three periodicities related to lunar orbit, the synodic month, the draconic month, and the anomalistic month coincide almost perfectly each Seiros cycle. For an eclipse to occur, either the Moon must be located between the Earth and Sun for a solar eclipse or the Earth must be located between the Sun and Moon for a lunar eclipse. This can happen only when the Moon is new or full, respectively, and repeat occurrences of these lunar phases result from solar and lunar orbits producing the Moon's synodic period of 29.53059 days. During most full and new Moons, however, the shadow of the Earth or Moon falls to the north or south of the other body. Eclipses occur when the three bodies form a nearly straight line. Because the plane of the lunar orbit is inclined to that of the Earth, this condition occurs only when a full or new moon is near or in the ecliptic plane, that is when the moon is at one of the two nodes, the ascending or descending node. The period of time for two successive lunar passes through the ecliptic plane returning to the same node is termed the draconic month, a 27.21222 day period. The three-dimensional geometry of an eclipse, when the new or full moon is near one of the nodes, occurs every five or six months when the Sun is in conjunction or opposition to the Moon and coincidentally also near a node of the Moon's orbit at that time, or twice per eclipse year. Two Seiros eclipses have the same appearance and duration due to the distance between the Earth and Moon being nearly the same for each event because the Seiros eclipse cycle is also an integer of the anomalistic month, the period of the eccentricity of lunar orbit, 27.5545 days. After one Seiros, the Moon will have completed roughly an integer number of synodic, draconic, and anomalistic periods 223, 242, and 239 and the Earth-Sun-Moon geometry will be nearly identical, the Moon will have the same phase and be at the same node and the same distance from the Earth. In addition, because the Seiros is close to 18 years in length about 11 days longer, the Earth will be nearly the same distance from the Sun, and tilted to it in nearly the same orientation same season. Given the date of an eclipse, one Seiros later a nearly identical eclipse can be predicted. During this 18-year period, about 40 other solar and lunar eclipses take place, but with a somewhat different geometry. 
1 Seiros equaling 18.03 years is not equal to a perfect integer number of lunar orbits Earth revolutions with respect to the fixed stars of 27.32166 days sidereal month, therefore, even though the relative geometry of the Earth-Sun-Moon system will be nearly identical after a Seiros, the Moon will be in a slightly different position with respect to the stars for each eclipse in a Seiros series. The axis of rotation of the Earth-Moon system exhibits a precession period of 18.59992 years. The Seiros is not an integer number of days, but contains the fraction of one-third of a day. Thus each successive eclipse in a Seiros series occurs about eight hours later in the day. In the case of an eclipse of the Sun, this means that the region of visibility will shift westward about 120 degrees, or about one-third of the way around the globe, and the two eclipses will thus not be visible from the same place on Earth. In the case of an eclipse of the Moon, the next eclipse might still be visible from the same location as long as the Moon is above the horizon. Given three Seiros eclipse intervals, the local time of day of an eclipse will be nearly the same. This three Seiros interval days is known as a triple Seiros or exligmos Greek turn of the wheel cycle. Topic: <laughs> Seiros series. Each Seiros series starts with a partial eclipse Sun first enters the end of the node, and each successive Seiros the path of the Moon is shifted either northward when near the descending node or southward when near the ascending node, due to the fact that the Seiros is not an exact integer of draconic months about one hour short. At some point, eclipses are no longer possible and the series terminates Sun leaves the beginning of the node. An arbitrary Solar Seiros series was designated as Solar Seiros Series 1 by compilers of eclipse statistics. This series has finished, but the eclipse of November 16, 1990 BC Julian calendar, for example is in Solar Seiros Series 1. There are different Seiros series for solar and lunar eclipses. For lunar Seiros series, the lunar eclipse occurring 58.5 synodic months earlier February 23, 1994 BC, was assigned the number 1. If there is an eclipse 1 in x 29 years minus about 20 days after an eclipse of a particular Seiros series then it is a member of the next series. For example, the eclipse of October 26, 1961 BC is in Solar Seiros series 2. Seiros series, of course, went on before these dates, and it is necessary to extend the Seiros series numbers backwards to negative numbers even just to accommodate eclipses occurring in the years following 2000 BC up till the last eclipse with a negative Seiros number in 1367 BC. For solar eclipses the statistics for the complete Seiros series within the era between 2000 BC and AD 3000 are given in this article's references. It takes between 1226 and 1550 years for the members of a Seiros series to traverse the Earth's surface from north to south, or vice versa. These extremes allow from 69 to 87 eclipses in each series most series have 71 or 72 eclipses. From 39 to 59 mostly about 43 eclipses in a given series will be central, that is, total, annular, or hybrid annular total. At any given time, approximately 40 different Seiros series will be in progress. Seiros series, as mentioned, are numbered according to the type of eclipse lunar or solar. In odd-numbered series of either kind, the Sun is near the ascending node, whereas in even-numbered series it is near the descending node. Generally, the ordering of these series determines the time at which each series peaks, which corresponds to when an eclipse is closest to one of the lunar nodes. For solar eclipses, the 40 series numbered between 117 and 156 are active series 117 will end in 2054, whereas for lunar eclipses, there are now 41 active Seiros series these numbers can be derived by counting the number of eclipses listed over an 18-year Seiros period from the Eclipse Catalog sites. <laughs> Topic. Example. As an example of a single Seiros series, this table gives the dates of some of the 72 lunar eclipses for Seiros series 131. This eclipse series began in AD 1427 with a partial eclipse at the southern edge of the Earth's shadow when the Moon was close to its descending node. 
In each successive Seiros, the Moon's orbital path is shifted northward with respect to the Earth's shadow, with the first total eclipse occurring in 1950. For the following 252 years, total eclipses occur, with the central eclipse in 2078. The first partial eclipse after this will occur in the year 2220, and the final partial eclipse of the series will occur in 2707. The total lifetime of Lunar Seiros series 131 is 1,280 years. Solar Seiros 138 interleaves with this Lunar Seiros with an event occurring every nine years five days alternating between each Seiros series. Because of the one-third fraction of days in a Seiros, the visibility of each eclipse will differ for an observer at a given locale. For the Lunar Seiros series 131, the first total eclipse of 1950 had its best visibility for viewers in Eastern Europe and the Middle East because mid-eclipse was at 2044 UT. The following eclipse in the series occurred about eight hours later in the day with mid-eclipse at 447 UT, and was best seen from North America and South America. The third total eclipse occurred about eight hours later in the day than the second eclipse with mid-eclipse at 12.43 UT, and had its best visibility for viewers in the Western Pacific, East Asia, Australia and New Zealand. This cycle of visibility repeats from the start to the end of the series, with minor variations. Solar Seiros 138 interleaves with this lunar Seiros with an event occurring every nine years five days alternating between each Seiros series. For a similar example for Solar Seiros see Solar Seiros 136. Topic. Relationship between Lunar and Solar Seiros SAR. After a given lunar or solar eclipse, after 9 years and 5.5 days a half Seiros, an eclipse will occur that is lunar instead of solar, or vice versa, with similar properties, for example, if the Moon's penumbra partially covers the southern limb of the Earth during a solar eclipse, 9 years and 5.5 days later a lunar eclipse will occur in which the Moon is partially covered by the southern limb of the Earth's penumbra. Likewise, nine years and 5.5 days after a total solar eclipse occurs, a total lunar eclipse will also occur. This nine-year period is referred to as a SAR. It includes 111.5 synodic months, or 111 synodic months plus one fortnight. The fortnight accounts for the alternation between solar and lunar eclipse. For a visual example see this chart each row is one SAR apart. Topic. See also List of Seiros series for lunar eclipses Eclipse cycle Solar eclipse Lunar eclipse Metonic cycle